All right, so here's our beam. We have our element stiffness matrix here, and we're going to see what we got in MathCAD. Get rid of that. There we go. All right, so hopefully if you already read this box at the top, it says, all right, the reason for not including units is because the stiffness matrix for beams is both displacement, right, because at each node it's displacement and rotation. Therefore, the units are not consistent throughout the stiffness matrix. So because of that lack of consistency, when you try to multiply it times something else that you've defined units on, uh, it doesn't like it. So we just have to leave off units so we can't use that nice little feature this time. All right, so that's why you won't see any units in this one. All right, so we have our modulus there, 10 times 10 to the sixth. Uh, I is 10,000. Omega distributed load is 1,000 pounds per inch, I believe it was. And the point load is uh, 100,000 pounds. All right, so here's our K, our stiffness matrix. All right, capital K because it's the local is the same as global because we are horizontal. We got our EI over L cubed, and then the rest that you can see on the interior there. All right, so that all looks like what we were expecting there. All right, so for element one, if we plug in our values, we have our modulus times our moment of inertia over our length cubed, right? And we come up with, we got 0.15 times 10 to the sixth. All right, so let's see if we can get that in math cat here. So scrolling down element one, we have the length of 200 inches, all right? So L1 is equal to L, which is just that 200. I guess I could just call L1 200, but anyway, so you can call this L or L1, either one's fine. And should be able to just hit equals, and it has all the values there. So this is 1.5 times 10 to the fifth, which is the same as 0.15 times 10 to the sixth. All right. Go to element two. Let's check out element two here. Element two, we plug in everything. It's pretty much exactly the same, right? How does element two compare to element one? What's that? Right, but it, point load doesn't show up in the stiffness matrix. How's the stiffness matrix different from element one? Let's go back here. If you look at these guys, how's, how's this matrix, how's this element going to be different from this element with just the stiffness matrix? Length. All right, so we got 200 inches here, 100 inches here. All right, so that's where we define the length here. So we got on to element two. We got L2. Put two in there. All right, and you get that guy. All right, so 1.2 times 10 to the sixth. Let's check that. 1.2 times 10 to the sixth looks like we're good. All right, any questions of that? All right. All right, so we'll go to the next phase here. So we're going to assemble our total stiffness matrix. All right, so we got element, or uh, sorry, node one and node two make up element one, all the blue. And then we have node 2 and node 3 make up all of element 2. So we have this crossover at node 2, hence the purple, blue, red, got it, okay, good. All right, so they're going to add up there. But we need to do this mathematically, so let's go back and do that here. All right, so we scroll down here. All right, so what are we going to have for the transpose matrix here? We want to take, what, what's, how big is the uh, global stiffness matrix going to be? Six by six, and how big is the element matrix? Four by six. All right, so what's the transpose matrix need to look like? Six by four or four by six, yep. Depends on what you want to do and where you place your, place your things. I'm going to do a six by four because you can see here this equation, it's going to be a six by four into a four by four, right? So you can do it the other way if you'd like. This one would just have to be the transposed matrix, and this one would be the normal one. All right, so where are our zeros going to be? For element one, if we have one, node one, and then node two, where do we put our ones? Where do we put our zeros? We got one here. One there. So that's for, uh, we're going to include everything from node one. How about for node two? Where do we put ones for node two? Here, here, okay. And zeros everywhere else. All 
All right, good. All right, so we can look at this guy. All right, so we get zeros in our node three column, node three row, and we get everything else that we had from element one. Stiffest matrix shows up right here in the upper left-hand corner. All right, in a six by six. That looks good. All right, how for element two, what do we got? What's the size of the matrix here, Ethan? So one of the two, yep. Now let's just do this one different. We'll be crazy. So make that one a four by six. All right, so what do we got here? Where do my ones and zeros go? Zeros in the first two columns. Why is that? That's node one, okay, yep. And what about, what do we have here? One here. And then we just do the diagonal again. All right, so we have that guy. Now I need to change this because it's different than what it should be because we did change our matrix. All right, so we should do that. I already have the summation set up there below. So it did that for me here. So it summed up the two global matrices. All right, so here's the global stiffness matrix all summed up for us. All right, so that looks good. What's that? We got 4,000 times 10 to the 6 there in the bottom right-hand corner. So 4,000 times 10 to the 6th. Four times ten to the ninth. Yep. Okay. So there's it. It is in all its glory already summed up. All right. So now we need the load matrices. All right. So we got the loads on nodes one and node two. So what was the case? What was element one had? What happening on it? Distributed, <coughs> distributed load. And we looked at that before. And so distributed load. If we take the um, take that distributed load and, and pull it toward each node on the sides, that means we're going to have omega L over 2 is going to be applied negatively at node 1. That's going to be the, the uh, force that's applied. And then the moment that's applied at node 1 is going to be omega L squared over 12. It's also in table 4.2. All right, and It's going to be a negative moment. Uh, at node 2, we're going to have a negative omega L over 2. So the load's going to be in the same direction right, as it is at node 1. But the moment's going to be in a different direction. Right? It's just going to be on the different ends of the beam. So instead of both going the same direction and one's working to push it down, the other one's working to pull it up, they're both going to be working to push it down. All right? So note that, that that sign change happens here. All right? And we can substitute all these values in. For the, whoops, for the point load, so for element two, that's what all the ones on the this second row are, we have a point load. So the point load, we're going to take half that load and put it on node two, and we're going to take half that load and put it on node three. It also creates a moment, and that moment, moment turns out to be PL over eight, negative moment at node two, and then PL over eight, positive moment at node three. All right, so if we go back to MathCAD, we're just going to, there are our values, so omega L over 2. Again, make sure you get the right L in there. Right? I defined just L up top, and I could have just used my K equation, which was a function of E, I, and L. But I need L1 down here, so I might as well define L1 somewhere. Uh, omega L squared over 12, et cetera, et cetera. And here's uh, force function number 2. So minus P over 2, minus PL over 8, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so we can hit those guys, click equals, and we can see what the values are coming out. <coughs> should be the same as what you see in the PowerPoint here. So we'll go back. Uh, let's look at this. Negative 3.33 times 10 to the 6 minus 3,333 times 10 to the 3rd. Yep, so that works out. All right. So now what we got next? We're going to assemble the global matrix, load matrix. Not the stiffness matrix, now it's the global load matrix. 
So now we're going to have this addition here in the middle between the two. All right, but first of all, we got to get our four by ones into what size? Six by ones. All right, so we come down here. All right, and we're going to take our transpose matrix that we already developed up top for our element one, and we're going to apply it to our forcing matrix, which is right here, load matrix. And then we get our six by one. And if we come over here, there's an error. What happened? Yeah, so what happened was I had originally done everything here. I did my transpose matrices as six by fours. And now that I changed one of them to a four by six, it's not going to work here. So I have to change what goes on here so I can do the transpose. All right, and then I get it popped in that way. All right, so another six by one there. And now I just add those two up. And I get this guy right there. All right. What's next? Boundary conditions. All right, so boundary conditions. We know that uh, we have no displacement at node 1. I should have drawn this, shouldn't I? No, node 1 is fixed on the wall on the far left. If you remember the original picture if you have it in your hand out in front of you. All right, and then we have node three, all the way at the far right, has a roller, so there's no vertical displacement. So we got zeros both in the moment, there's no deflection at node one, and there's no vertical displacement at node one, and there's no vertical displacement at node three. So that means rows one, two, and five, that would be rows, sorry, rows one, two, and five, and then columns one, two, and five need to go. All right. Alternatively, you could set, you could put a one right here, and then zeros, and then a one right here, and zeros, and then a one right here, and zeros. All right. But using MathCAD, it would easier just to take the thing down from a six by six to a three by three. All right. So that's what we're going to do. So if we go back, all right. What's our boundary condition matrix need to look like? Wait, are you guys creating your boundary condition matrix before I do? It's no one fair. All right, this time I'm going to do it manually, so I'll put my square bracket in, and I got zero, shift space, zero, shift space, zero, tab, zero, 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 tab, one, zero, 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 one, zero, tab, zero, 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 one. And order does matter. All right. So we got that guy in there. And so our reduced stiffness matrix becomes this little guy. All right. So if we look over here, we've got our 1.35, 45, 60. 1.35, 45, 60. But times 10 to the seventh here instead of 10 to the sixth before. You need to do the same thing to the load matrix. We can use our same beat boundary condition matrix, transpose to our global force loading matrix. And get just those loads. Solving it here. Uh, sorry, I took all the fun out of it for you. You can take out the equal sign and put it back in if you want. All right. So then, what are these values? Well, actually, let's reinflate it. So this right now is on the after we applied the boundary conditions. If we apply our boundary condition matrix to it to reinflate back to the so we get all six, we can see here. Uh, what do we have here? Zero what? Zero displacement at at node one. What's this? Zero slope in units. Radians. Okay, so what's this? In two. I heard that. Yeah, so you have to check your length again. And now we're kind of doing ANSYS school here, right? So if we don't have units, we're going we to see what we've been applying and make sure we do it consistently up top. So this is in inches. Um, and then we have, this is 0 0.002. Radians, right, the slope. Zero. Inches where? Node three, that's the roller constraint, so no vertical there. And then we have 0 .06, 0 0.006 radians at node three. Right, so there's your inches and your radians those guys. All right. 
To get the reaction forces, we need a, that's why we needed the 6 by 1 and the 6 by 6 again. So the reaction forces, we use the global full size uh, stiffness and loading matrix along with our displacements we just found. And we get the reaction forces. We got some 10 to the negative 11. So uh, some of you who talked about doing this or math formatting tab at the top. And you can't see the drop down menu, but change to decimal. All right, and that usually takes those big ones to zero. All right, so the reaction forces then are what we see there. Let's see a question, Paul. Or? Um, yeah, what step was it that like caused those dots to be? The first one was supposed to be the second rotation. So, like, why would I tell it to be the same process we've done in the house? Yep. So, yep. So, like, why? When, we do, when we created the stiffness matrix, right. so kind of the stiffness matrix in concert with the load matrix. So if we go back to this load matrix, all right, so this load matrix made of the first one is vertical force. This is a moment, vertical force moment. And if we go back to the development of the stiffness matrix, the ones position is loading force, and the two position is moment. Yeah. All right. Any questions there? Yes. Can you go back to the slide you just saw again? Uh, a couple of those were asked. How can you assume to use those same uh, uh, shear and moment equations from the generalized beam if it's not actually fixed on the other end? The, so here, good question. So Greg's asking, we have this here, but when we developed this initially, we said it was actually, the, the one we developed it on was fixed on both ends. And in our case here, our distributed load, we're fixed here. Well, that's all well and good, but over here, we're not. All right, well, that comes into play when we apply the boundary conditions. And we say that right here, we have fixed for one and two, right? So these guys aren't moving, but then these guys are allowed to have some displacement. So solving it there, in addition to using the, the previous information, works to allow that to deflect from where it was. Because ultimately we're just trying, it was, it was just to find, if we take this distributed load, what would it look like applying at those two points? It didn't actually say what it would, how the beam would look. And this tells us what the beam looks like after that forces and moments are applied. But yeah, good question. So yeah, so when you when you work on this and you apply this, you're gonna look at your your beam and see how, okay, well this is kind of obvious, you know, put a node right there, I get distributed load here, point load in the middle, and it looks something just like we have from table 4.2. Right, but really you're trying to do is you're, you wanna break up your element, break up your beam into as many elements as you need to get this these three things to show up. So you can easily say, oh, okay, this node, I have this load and this moment, and this node, I have this load, this moment. All right. Yeah. Just to clarify, uh, the general form of the system matrix is the same for every element that I have. So this one right here? Yeah. Yeah, anytime we have it, if we're just looking at a beam, yeah, because all beams will be horizontal. <coughs> yeah. All right, eventually what we're going to do is we're going to, well, with the frames, so this is axial members, <coughs> beams, and frames. Frames, we're going to take axial members and beams, put them together, and we're going to look at all three. So the ultimate, penultimate of our analysis. All right, I think that was all I had. Yep.